Hello, here we are. We are now live on Facebook after all that. We are live on Facebook for the event. There was a bit of a hassle with YouTube. So we are now starting 8.30. So if you miss the opening, come online onto Facebook, head to Voice Science at Facebook, and you will find the event happening right now. How to show your English pronunciation a little love. Okay, so welcome. I hope that everyone is not too frustrated or flustered. I think I'm the flustered one after our little glitch with YouTube. But that being said, it's the night, the eve of Valentine's Day, and it's definitely a moment to think about things that are lovely and romantic. And look, if we have tech glitches, life is not all about tech. There's a lot more that is enjoyable beyond that. So this evening, I'm very excited to talk you through some strategies for ways in which you can show your English pronunciation some love. Now, you may never really sat down and thought, does my English pronunciation need love? And if you haven't, and English is your second language, I would argue that yes, it does. And maybe not the type of love that you expect. See, the thing is, when we speak in our second language, we're often terribly harsh on ourselves in terms of things we should do better and this feeling that we're not quite there yet. However, there is so much to consider in terms of a strengths based model when we start to think about the benefits and the advantages of being bilingual. So today's skills class is just for you. If you need someone to show you your bilingual beauty, if you'd like to break up with that feeling of stress and anxiety when you're speaking in English as your second language and start going strong and steady with confident, clear and charismatic communication because after all that is what we're here for we live in this world we use our words among other senses and expressions to share our value our worth and our merit and love with everyone around us and for many of us when we switch into our second language there's these moments where it doesn't sit as comfortably and it's very easy to fall into that trap of losing self-esteem and losing confidence. So my mission in life is basically to assist clients that I meet anywhere and everywhere to boost their comfort and confidence such that barriers and limiting beliefs are reduced and in the best situation removed in order for my client to actualize their communication potential. And I'm of the view that communication is something that we all need to practice across our entire lifespan, myself included. In fact, if we have a growth mindset about other aspects of our life, like our health, our fitness, our anti-aging skin regime, we can talk hours about that, but don't worry about that. Um, if we have a growth focus about our favorite sports and hobbies and activities, why shouldn't we have a similar approach when it comes to giving our communication more nutrition. So let's get straight into it. I will share my screen with you. I just would love to know from people who are tuning in, can you please give me a thumbs up or write me a comment if you can see me, if you can hear me. And then importantly, we also need to make this get a little bit of a community feel because communication, although it feels a little one sided in a webinar kind of setup, it's definitely a lot more than just me. So I would love to ask you two questions. Firstly, where are you watching from? So where are you tuning in from? Type it in the comments. And secondly, if you could tell me what is the core goal for your communication? in 2022. I would love to hear that. I will read every single comment and reply accordingly once this live is over. Okay, so at that point, I also want to make sure that I can um, actually see any 
engagements or reactions. So let me just load my Facebook page so that hopefully I can check what's going on. I'll just get that up on my phone in case there's any questions. So in today's skill class, we will be doing a variety of things in order to give your pronunciation a little bit of love. Ooh la la. And at the end of the class, we'll open for questions. So make sure you stick around. I find that when I do live coaching calls, some of the most enjoyable things for me are actually the question um, the questions I hear from people in a community, the questions I hear from the expert consultant or coach. So do stick around for question time. Now, there will be a little bit of a lag because live always, obviously, I'm always slightly a step ahead of everyone, um, although it didn't feel like it earlier when we were on YouTube. So if there's a little bit of a lag, nothing to worry about. We will work with it. And I'll just wait for responses and things like that once we get into question time a little bit later. So at the moment, you will see my screen. Let's go into presentation mode. I'm just going to check that that view is right. And hopefully now you will very shortly see our um, presentation. So the big question on Valentine's Eve is, what can we do with our English pronunciation when we want to show it just that little bit more of love, a little bit more love? What could we actually do to benefit it? So if you've been wondering what it would be that would take your English pronunciation to the point where you can finally check out of the worry and the angst and go, I really got this one. I should start learning my fifth or my fourth or my seventh language because I can, I've completely mastered English pronunciation. This webinar and skills class will actually take you through a nice way to appraise and assess your English pronunciation, to see where it's at, to work out what limiting beliefs you have, to consider what ideas and thoughts and conceptions you have about your speaking that you should definitely throw in the trash can because they're not romantic enough, they're not affirming enough. And I think you'll get a lot out of this one. So today you're going to learn what can you do if you need to affirm and build up your attitude about your English pronunciation, your skills and techniques with your English pronunciation, and your growth goals for your English pronunciation. Albay, let's give it a little more love. At the end of today's training, you'll have the opportunity also, this is just a quick heads up, to learn a little bit about our latest package that's up for offer. So we always work in the area of pronunciation clarification, but we have a really special, sweet and loving Valentine's package called Cupid's Precise Pronunciation Package. And this offer is only available to people on our email list. So if you'd like to join the email list, you can find that in the comments on our Facebook page. There's a few URLs, head across to it, enter your details, and then I can send you all the info. But We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Let's head into the skills training. So before we commence and I give you a bit of info, let's first make sure that this workshop is right for you. I would hate it if you're tuning in and you're like, well, that was a waste of time. I could have spent some more romantic moments with my dinner and I didn't really need this. So let's go through a few factors that would indicate if this workshop is worth you listening to. The first one to consider would be, well, it's great for you if you want to know exactly what you need to move to the next space with your English pronunciation. So if you're feeling stuck and jammed and you don't know where to progress to, this workshop is for you. It's also for you if you believe that your English pronunciation really could improve. Now, at the end of the workshop, you might think, well, you know what, after that bit of advocacy from Sarah, I don't think I need to work on my pronunciation. I think I want to work on my career communication. So the goal of this workshop is to show you, is it your pronunciation that needs a little love? Or is it your professional interaction style and leadership presence that needs a little bit of love? Or is it, you know, is it time to check out of deep fear about your English pronunciation and in so doing, give your pronunciation the love it needs and finally go, I'm doing a good job. It's also for you if you love our expert tips. So if you know me or you know my team and you enjoy what we do, you'll enjoy this one. 
It's definitely for you, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to show off your bilingual beauty and you're struggling with that, you're bilingual, you just haven't found that point to accept the advantage it gives you, please continue to listen because this will really affirm you. And it's for you if you want to break up with anxiety and start going steady with pronunciation confidence. Now, this workshop obviously is not for everyone. It is definitely not for you if you're looking for an overnight success. So if you're looking for a quick fix solution that solves absolutely everything that you don't enjoy about your pronunciation and communication, I'm very sorry to break it to you, but it's a fact. Communication is both an art and a science, and we should all work on it for the rest of our lives. Now, should you work on your pronunciation for the rest of your life? No, but you should definitely have this mindset that to get traction with speaking, communication goals are long-term. This workshop is not for you if you don't have at the moment capacity to devote the minimum of an hour for your communication or pronunciation per week. That's about the minimum you need. The more, the better. But if you're so time strapped, you're busy study, studying, you're busy working, maybe you only recently arrived in Australia, you just don't have time to focus on this small niche aspect of what you've got to do professionally or personally. Go and go study for uni, whatever it is, okay? Maybe later, thinking about these concepts will be great and you can definitely watch the replay or tune in with our content on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook and so forth. So I think that's good for you to note. It is also not for you if English is your first language. So if you're worried about aspects of your pronunciation clarity, but English is your first language, I would say it's better to look into other areas. This is more around the pronunciation factors we face when we're interacting and engaging and integrating with our second, third or fourth language. So if you don't know me, <laughs> I'd be surprised. I'm not famous or anything, but if you don't know me, um, this is who I am. I'm Sarah Lobergeiger de Rodriguez. I was born in the 1980s and I used to be really shy to say how old I am, but I am absolutely delighted to say I was born before the silicon era and the LED screen and social media taking over the world. And my childhood was spent, I had no TV, um, reading books, painting, reading um, about ancient costumes in remote parts of Russia or Siberia and drawing drawings of them and reading Shakespeare and reading lots of literature before I was even old enough to understand it just because I thought it looked sophisticated. Um, and I was very much raised with a world full of language and sound and an absolute desire to just go live in Europe. <laughs> That's me. I went to school in a very Anglo-Saxon school where everyone had a surname that was about one to two syllables long. Obviously, I got myself in a situation where Lobergeig was really not a surname that was kind of accessible for anyone in Australia in the 80s. So I was constantly asked, where are you from? And what, you've got a strange name. So I think from there's some research into info about how by virtue of our surname or our first name, if it's slightly different from the environment around us, we start to see our identity as slightly separate. And I think that's something that really kind of set the tone for me. I always gravitated towards the exotic and travel and learning a new language. And, you know, my childhood goals were at the age of six to be a French film star. And mum was like, Sarah, you can't be a French film star. You're Australian. I was like, well, how can I learn French so I can become one? So I pulled a dictionary off the very top of our multiple bookshelves. We grew up in a house where we had more bookshelves than money. <laughs> more books than money that pretty much sums it up um and I'd be like dad get me that one and as I got older I, I started to not be able to you know reach all the top shelf and so there was an old French dictionary that my mum had from her girls schools girls school years and I remember sitting down with the dictionary and a notepad at about the age of seven or eight and looking up words and copying them out and really thinking I will learn French and I will speak French and I will be a French actress just like Sophie Marceau um, but 
No, <laughs> obviously there's a lot of realistic ways to learn language and we'll be talking about that today. So I'm founder and director at Voice Science. I've also um, been working extensively as a communication performance consultant or executive speaking coach, you could call it, but I don't really like the word coach, consultant um, for executives and emerging leaders in my company, Sarah Geiger International. So if you're looking at corporate communication, you should definitely check the YouTube channel, the Telegram group and the Facebook page and of course website for Sarah Geiger International. I head up an incredible team of speech pathologists who work from Melbourne via our telehealth organisation, um, telehealth interface. We work in the area of communication training and speech therapy purely for adults. So we're totally dedicated to developing novel and ingenious science-backed solutions for anyone who's facing a communication barrier. And all of our work is backed by a research base. If we don't know the research behind something, we really try to stay in our lane and help clients overcome their speaking barriers. Our mission essentially is to open barriers in reference to our pronunciation clients to English clarity and comfort via science-backed strategies. So we don't share our opinion, we share what we know from the science backing for speech pronunciation training. I'm very proud to say that Voice Science is the only company in Australia offering English pronunciation training with a team of bilingual speech pathologists. So together the team speak six languages. So if you work with our team on your English pronunciation, I can vouch that you will feel supported, understood, advocated for, like nowhere else. I only hire bilingual speech pathologists or multilingual speech pathologists to work within this area now. I think it's essential that our team understand the nuance, the challenges, and have some lived experience of what it feels like to speak in a second language and integrate professionally in a language that's not your dominant language. So we definitely are so passionate about our work in this area. Today, we are going to talk about a few things briefly, um, really important things, I should say, in terms of comparing our first language to our second language. So if you've ever been in a situation where you feel so demoralized about your communication in your second language to the point where you've started to question whether you lost your talents in expressing your identity and your skill in your second language, this workshop is for you. One of the most, I guess I could say, inspiring comments I ever heard from a client working with me in the past, which always makes me emotional, was when a client said to me, and I've heard this along a similar line from many, Sarah, I used to be so talented at public speaking in my first language, and I am the last person I would ever think would need to come to get help with speaking, but I can't communicate. I can't communicate anymore. And did I lose, did I lose my talent? And I think it's very important to consider. We have talents and they go across all our languages and just because for whatever reason the environment you're communicating in doesn't affirm and empower you does not mean you lost your skill your expertise or your talent unfortunately we live in a world that still has a long way to come when it comes to linguistic acceptance and diversity and the presence of accent variation as not being something that signals a lack of expertise. And so many people are being sidelined for not speaking in the same manner as their listener. And that is so incredibly disappointing for me, but that's the reality. So I think it's essential if you feel like you're not as comfortable when you're communicating in your second language, make sure you draw a line in the sand and don't let that affect the way you view your talents and your skills as a communicator or your expertise. And if there's a barrier to your workforce entry that's being put in place by some someone or something ridiculous on the basis of English not being your second language, this 
is, I hate to say it, a form of racism. And we don't accept that. So our team are working really hard to break the barriers and build advocacy and create messages that promote, you know, tearing down the structures that say it's okay to talk about people's accent. It's okay to make comments about, you know, how strong someone's accent is. It's not okay. That's inappropriate and it needs to stop. Next thing we'll talk about briefly is migrant grief. Now, if you have not heard this term before, you need to read about it. If you are living abroad outside of even your hometown or country of origin, you must read about migrant grief. Migrant grief can sabotage your success in communication and many other factors. And we experience numerous symptoms when we go through it. And it's pretty much inevitable when we move from our home country or our home city. I won't talk in detail about migrant grief now, but one of the best ways you can give your English speaking some love is to type into Google migrant grief voice science and you will find the most amazing blog post that summarizes a wonderful podcast I did with psychologist Smyrna Romero who's a bilingual psychologist based in Melbourne. And she talks about the features of migrant grief and it's very important that you can spot the signs. So please make a note to read that article. We'll also talk briefly about access to career. So I'm of the view that bilingualism is an advantage. If someone speaks English with a slight accent inflection, well, so do I, I also have an accent. And that should be no barrier to a career path. So if this is the first time you've heard this, um, please get the word out there. Just because we have an accent does not mean we should not move to a CEO role. So any of those concepts that are very much prevalent in the world about diversity and equal opportunity need to also start to persist and open doors for speakers of different accent features. So. If we can say it is not okay to sideline women in corporate executive roles, just substitute it. It is not okay to sideline people from a different language background with a slightly different accent from me from corporate roles. Okay. And when you hear it that way, of course, it makes sense. It shouldn't be a barrier. The next factor we want to talk about is realistic advocacy. So if you're tuning in to this skills class, you're watching because there's, I suspect, I hypothesize, you're tuning in because possibly there's a sense that you're not there yet, or your communication isn't good enough, or you need to fix something, which will automatically set you up for some limiting beliefs, which may need to be removed. So part of giving your English speaking some love is to consider I need to advocate for the skills and strengths I have realistically and give myself some credit where I deserve it. And then possibly also consider what factors I can amplify and improve. But I will argue there is always something strong and solid you're doing with your speaking that you can give yourself points for. And the more you pay attention to what you do well, the better your communication will be because you'll start to speak up more and you'll be confident. And one of the quickest ways to get to that is to focus on your bilingual beauty and just consider I have more words as a bilingual. Would I want to lose this capacity to move between languages? Although sometimes it really annoys me that I'm not there yet in English, you wouldn't undo your first language. You, you wouldn't. It's one of the biggest gifts in the world. So set aside some time to think about how you can better advocate for your English speaking, because that might be something you've never given yourself time or headspace for. If you've prepared for English speaking exams, university entrance, getting into your corporate field, finally getting that first professional role in a country away from home, there usually is very little time to think, what am I doing well with my communication? And you need to balance it out realistically. Growth mindset, we've mentioned at the start of this um, skills class, but in a nutshell, if we can work on our physical health, 
we can work on our communication health. And there's numerous factors and niches in communication, body language, eye contact, listening with attention, being assertive, speaking with clarity no matter the language we're speaking in, finding words that make our listeners stay engaged. There are so many things that we can grow with. Pronunciation may be a big one for you to work on right now, but it's not the only thing. So let's apply a growth mindset to everything we do in life. Now it's time to get into the meat and the meat and vegetables, the meat and potatoes of tonight's romantic dinner for your pronunciation. So we're taking our pronunciation out for dinner and we're going to go through more detail on that. And let's get into some delicious morsels. If you want to give your English pronunciation some love, it's I think one of the quickest and easiest ways to get started is to take stock and know, as I mentioned, exactly what you're doing well and what you need to step up if there's anything you need to improve. So pronunciation is a very general term. It is a huge term. There are so many factors to pronunciation. It's like a big umbrella term. And if you know all of the micro facets that constitute pronunciation clarity, and you work through it and audit it, you will be able to tick certain boxes and score yourself at 80% accuracy or 100% accuracy. It's very concrete. So if you're sitting there thinking, I want to work on my English pronunciation, you need to drill down and get much deeper and more precise and specific with that and audit like an accountant at tax time, every single facet that makes up this huge composite that is your English speaking and work through and see where you're at against a baseline that you're aiming for. So the best position to be in to audit your speaking would be if you're in, if you're feeling a certain thing. So we're going to run through a few feelings that would kind of give merit for you actually bothering to maybe invest in assessing your pronunciation or you know to even stop and think well what could i do better so does this sound like you if you feel like it's hard to know how to fix consonant and vowel sounds and if you're tuning into native speakers and you're really trying to mimic and copy and it's not working if that's the case it's pretty much science based. It's very hard for adults to copy what they hear and mimic and produce it. So if that's the case, you want to feed your pronunciation by using a phonetics based approach. So phonetics is the answer. We'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Okay, so sound worries that would be, you know, I keep saying shit instead of sheet like spread shit instead of spread sheet or cock instead of coke excuse excuse my language you know if you're really worried about saying um something like lunch versus lunge you're dealing with phonetic issues that you could definitely build up and our team can show you how but what about if something else is going on what about if you're really worried about your capacity to feel like when you open your mouth to speak in English, the sounds are in sync and you've got that flow and that effortless pace that lets you have those thoughts in your mind, compute them through your mouth motor, get it to your listener at the speed and the flow that matches your brain signals. So when we're in our second language, we often get into this position where it's very hard to feel the mechanical coordination. And it can distract us actually from speaking confidently because we're trying to move through the sounds and we've got a bit of a gap between the time by which we want to say something and the actual precision needed to get it out at that speed. It's a little bit like a clock that's not ticking properly because the battery's not working. So if that's the case, you need to work on your fluency and fluency in terms of the mechanics, in terms of the way the mouth moves, where the tongue goes, how the voice works and all of those features. And to do that, the solution for that is linking and intonation exercises. They're the answer. So if you feel like you're speaking and your conversation partner's like, yeah, um, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, um, 
can you make that quicker? <laughs> or like they're tuning out and you believe it's due to your pronunciation, quite possibly you want to increase the degree to which your words unite and bind and marry. This is Valentine's Eve. You want to marry your words tighter together so that they flow with agility. I'll show you an example. Um, in German, if I were to say, I don't know, um, ich weiß es nicht. So I'm going to say that. And let's just say, I still can't get those sounds moving right. So I'm going to say the phrase, I don't know. Ich weiß es nicht. Yeah, or uh, ich weiß es nicht. Versus fluency, where we would hear something like, ich weiß es nicht. Ich weiß es nicht. There, linking and intonation help me bind and connect the words so that they move with agility. And importantly, you would want to get this happening on the phrases you frequently say, like things like, how's it going? Or I've been really worried about, or I'd love to speak to you about, rather than I'd love to speak to you about. So here we have a little bit of a disengagement and disconnection. And by doing linking and intonation exercises, there's a lot of rules around linking that our team have resources and prepped lots of supports for you with. You will bind together your words more. If you've already worked with our team, you may have done a lot of a phonetics focus in the start of your session. So if you've done something like five or 10 sessions, the bulk of your training would have been phonetics based. There comes a point where those goals really start to stick and I would strongly recommend considering whether it's now the time to really connect those words, integrate the sounds and build up the speed and connection in your speech. And we've got lots of exercises for that. Okay, third feeling to address. Um, this would be the one that we'd want to order the most beautiful a la carte Valentine's dessert. If you wanted to spoil your English pronunciation, and you're feeling like this, you would order the best dessert on the menu because you know what, it's Valentine's Eve and it's time to treat yourself. So if you feel physically, mentally, and almost emotionally drained by constantly having to work harder to get people to take you seriously and show you the respect you deserve, advocacy is the answer. Advocacy for your bilingual, bilingual advantage is what you need. So addressing your sounds will build your confidence to a certain degree. Working on your linking will also make you feel pretty good because you feel more coordinated. You're less likely to fall off the bike. But if you're struggling with presenting your viewpoints and backing up your ideas, in an assertive manner, according to your bilingual presentation, you need to work on advocacy. All right, so we get you. We've already talked about how our team is the premium team with bilingual clinicians who have lived experience of what it feels like to be lost in translation and lost in identity with that cognitive dissonance between first and second, and even for some of us, a third language. We get you, we've got you. Every team member at Voice Science has lived experience abroad or locally of what it feels like to move across languages as a student, as a young professional as a as a you know career professional someone working in their actual profession so we've got a big mix we've got team members who did a gap year and then started working professionally over overseas in their second language we've got team members who are international students in their second language um so there's there's lots of scope there is if there's anything you take away from today and any message you share with the world about giving English pronunciation more love as a bilingual, please take this one. You can quote me. I'm going to quote myself. I love this one so much. It is so true and it's the best way you can give your English speaking a little bit of love. There is no such thing as a strong accent. It's all relative. So if anyone is saying, oh, you got a bit of a strong accent there, where you're from, or 
Do I hear an accent? It's quite strong. Or, you know, um, what, what was that? I can't, you know, I just, I can't understand what you're saying. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to help everybody else. Advocacy. We need to advocate more and speak up about the fact that there's no such thing as a strong accent. It's all relative. So stop people commenting. Find ways to build a barrier so that people are not in a position to comment on features like your accent. We don't comment on body size, or we shouldn't. We don't comment on, you know, IQ capacity in the workplace. We don't say things like, gosh, you know, your brain is not really working very well. You should work on that. We don't comment on skin tone. We don't comment on religion, hopefully, or politics. It's not okay. It's discrimination. So if that's the case, why are people commenting on your accent? It's not okay. There is no such thing as a strong accent. It says a lot about a listener who says that. So rather than being aggressive, we need to educate. We need to find ways to open the conversation about this topic. And that's one of the best ways to give yourself some love for your English pronunciation, but also to get the message out there so that others don't feel as held back or sidelined. I'm of the view that no one needs to change or reduce their accent. No one, no one needs to change their accent. So then you might be like, so Sarah, why do you do pronunciation clarity training? Well, no one needs to change or reduce their accent, but many people choose to make some key adjustments to benefit ignorant listeners or because of their person, personal aesthetic drive. So this preference to capture their image of what clear English means to them. So I quickly ran through the slides with my husband and he's like, are you going to keep the word ignorant there? I said, I am. Because if anyone's ever made you feel that you need to work on your accent because you're not there yet, that's a form of ignorance. And that shows that your conversation partner hasn't had exposure to accent variety. I know from research that in the first five minutes of someone talking to you, the brain adjusts and starts switching the code so that they can understand what you're saying. The listener can understand with time and practice. So if you are feeling like, you know, you're not accepted because you sound different, there's, there's a degree of ignorance in the world that's making it that way. Should you change your pronunciation? I can't answer that for you. It's very personal. There are some valid reasons that people find for improving their clarity. Because obviously with message transfer, reduction in distraction for certain listeners. So there's some negative bias out there according to who you speak with on the basis of your pronunciation. But let me tell you, on the other hand, there's positive bias. There's people like me and my team who hear variation on pronunciation sounds and we think about the research and we're like, great, this person is bilingual. I will jump to the science-backed assumption and evidence. They must be more empathetic. They must be more flexible. They must have increased cognitive skills and IQ. They must know more words. They must have more experience of the world. They must be more flexible and able to solve problems because we have research on bilingual advantage. That's the beauty of multilingualism. So by the same measure, I know a lot of clients who really believe they cannot get ahead unless they work on their English and their pronunciation transfer. So take some time to think about what it is for you. Some people like myself in my languages, I'm an opera singer as well. So in my operatic languages for classical music, we always aim for perfection. So when I sing Italian, I'm always trying to sing it with an Italian accent. For me as a musician, it's not okay to sing, oh mio barbino caro. I have to sing, oh mio barbino caro. A 
Okay, so by using the sounds of Italian, I can express the words of the message and the music for my art form. So there's lots of reasons why people might work on their pronunciation. It's so nuanced. What's important is to give yourself some love for your speaking to actually sit and think, if I were to do it, why am I doing it? And that's a question I usually ask clients who are wondering about whether they should work with our team. I'll usually say, um, if you want to know whether you should work on your pronunciation, ask yourself a question about the money it will cost you because you're going to pay money to do it. So ask yourself, I'm willing to invest this amount of money to improve my clarity so that I can and then put a fixed outcome and that will tell you your answer much quicker. So if you say something like, for example, I am willing to purchase Cupid's pronunciation package so that I can increase my English pronunciation skills so that I can pronounce my work related vocabulary in team meetings with less effort to get my ideas across faster and with more impact. Then ask yourself, well, is that worth it to me? And that will give you a quick answer. When we line things up with money, <laughs> we get a quick answer usually. And if you're not sure, send me an email, write on the chat box, ask me a question on Instagram. I'll always be frank, direct and honest as to whether you should take your pronunciation goals forward. Talk to me about the goal you have. Talk to me about the setbacks you face as a communicator. I've been working in this field long enough to call the shots and say, you know what? And I do this often. I've even emailed a client or messaged a client the other day when I released this offer. I said, don't you dare buy this. This is not for you. You do not need to spend money on this because you've got these skills in place. Okay. So that's important. All right. It is Valentine's Eve. I'm not normally so excited about Valentine's. Oh, well, look, I am. But see, I found my Valentine. I have the most amazing love of my life. And, you know, if you're looking for your other, the other half for your pronunciation, I definitely found him. <laughs> if you're looking for your pronunciation's other half, I want to give you a bouquet. And I've created just for tonight, this afternoon, I sat down and I, you know, I should have been fixing my YouTube setup and trialing it for the third time, second time. But I sat down and I've made a special speaking petal formula for you to use to evaluate your pronunciation this Valentine's Eve. So we're going to have a quick look at that. So the speaking petal formula, we don't use in the clinic. It's just for tonight, just for some fun and, you know, a little bit of love and to make phonetics more interesting. We've got some petals. So when you look at pronunciation, remember I said it's an umbrella term. So you want to break pronunciation down into our bottlenecks. We call them bottlenecks at Voice Science, but we're going to call them petals for Valentine's Eve. So your first petal is your consonant sounds. So p, b, g, t, all of these sounds of English. You also have consonants in your first language. The second petal is your vowels. A, e, i, o, u, o, e, a, u, u, o, u, u. Okay, loads, uh, the schwa, loads of vowels for English pronunciation. English has among the most vowels in the world for of world languages. There's a lot going on. Rhythm and flow. Rhythm and flow involves quite a few things. It involves the way in which you emphasize vowels. So I could have something like my name, Sarah in English pronunciation versus Sarah in a romance language pronunciation so in spanish or in um not french because the r is different in italian yeah in portuguese it would be sara versus sera so you hear that long vowel that's relating to the word stress we also have phrase stress so things like um can you get it we hear a certain rhythm we have a lot of rhythm features with reference to long and short vowels. So I'll show you a few. Cut versus cut. So um, I need to cut the kids to school versus I cut my finger. So that is related to vowels. But when you get accuracy on your vowels, you get the right rhythm in the word level, in the phrase level. 
And then we've got flow, which we talked about, which is linking. So the way the sounds of the words join together, and there's so many cool rules with that, especially for mainstream Australian pronunciation. So there's no such thing as correct Australian pronunciation. If you're living in Australia, I don't care about your visa status. If you're in Australia and you're speaking, that's Australian pronunciation for me. It's pronunciation we're hearing in Australia and that's, that's good enough. I'll take that, whatever it is. But when we look at the features of certain pattern markers for what is commonly seen as Australian English, um, and if you wanna read more about that, go online and Google Australian English in the Sydney Morning Herald or the age. I was interviewed in the most amazing article written by um, a journalist at the age about the Australian accent. It's fantastic. Go and have a read. You will love it. Carl wrote such a wonderful summary of Australian English that goes so deep. So if that's something that interests you, just Google, I don't know, Sarah Lobegeiger or just Google Australian accent, the age and find the most recent big article about that. Or you can head to our website to read about it. Um, there's lots of articles on Australian accent there. And then intonation, how you ask questions, how you convey the emotion, the heart and soul of your message. Now, a lot of that relates to things around word choice, but it also relates to intonation patterns and the melody of your speaking. So languages are different in terms of the way the voice moves through the message. So if I say, hi, my name is Sarah, the intonation will be da, 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 da. Okay, so that varies across languages. Some languages are, you know, um, very much going upwards with the intonation or going downwards. Most languages raise the voice of a question like that. Um, but obviously there's, there's so many nuances across languages. So intonation is also a feature of the pronunciation, but very much a part of social interaction and rapport building too. So here we go. If you do an audit with our team, we will examine every single consonant, all the vowels, the rhythm and flow, and the intonation. That is, in a nutshell, what encapsulates pronunciation. So if you're thinking, oh my, like, Dios mio, I don't know how to fix my English pronunciation. I, I'm stuck. Trust me, it's fixable, whatever that is, you know, whatever the fix is that you're wanting, we can put strategies in place to boost your clarity on your consonants, to increase precision on the vowels, to work on rhythm and flow and intonation, but we will not reduce or remove your accent. What we're wanting to do is increase the ratio of target sounds in the precision for the accent pattern you're aiming for. So the bulk of your sounds move in that direction. We, we're not gonna undo your current accent. We just want to raise the accuracy across these features for the target language. And that's that can be really important for some people. So that would be the difference between something like, you know, hola or taco and hola and taco, right? Like if that matters to you in English in the opposite direction or, you know, um, uh, was sag do versus was <laughs> I mean, that would matter, I think. <laughs> think about it and that can tell you, you know, play around and sort of think, how does it feel for me if the sounds are not quite where I believe they belong for like the traditional features of English, not saying that that's the only way to speak. And then with that in mind, the next step is to consider, you know, um, maybe I should get my phonetic inventory. So your phonetic inventory is pretty much a catalogue or shopping list of all of the sounds and features of your pronunciation target. So you could have a shopping list for your French pronunciation, you could have a shopping list for your German pronunciation, all the features of the accent patterns you're aiming for to boost clarity and confidence. And what it does is it gives you a roadmap so you know exactly how to work on your speaking. So if you've been doing English classes since childhood or, you know, lately, you know, on arrival to Australia or America, or wherever you're tuning in from, you attended lots of English classes to pass IELTS or PTE or you're still grappling with it. I can warrant that, mo not to be rude to ESL teachers, they are incredible but it tends to be in a group framework and the pronunciation skill of analyzing the sound data, which is very much physics based and phonetics based, is not something that most English teachers are skilled in. That's something that comes in the realm of linguistics, 
phonetics is a part of speech pathology as well. So our team, we went to uni to learn how to assess sound and how to train sound. So what we'd want to do is look at what is your sound code? How can you um, enhance and boost it? And what sounds are working so that you know where are the strengths and what do you not need to work on? And basically, what are your sticking points? Guys, I have, something is playing on my headphones. Let me just, <laughs> something very, like there's some music. Is that like my cue to be like, okay, sorry, you're done. Definitely not. But I can hear like some hip hop, French hip hop. I don't know why, but I could hear hip, hip hop. I hope you all can't hear hip hop. <laughs> okay, I think we're doing all right. <laughs> let's, um, let's hope for the best. <laughs> Had a little breakout session there. Time to do some dance moves. Okay, so you wanna know the sticking points for your speaking clarity and confidence. Otherwise, panic can definitely set in. Now I wanna check can everyone see me? It looks like my um, my camera may be off. Can you all see me? Let me know in the comments if you're having any issues. So you can see me, great. Okay, cool, that's great. Thank you so much, Joyce. You're the best. Joyce is amazing. She's, she's always here for support and commenting and engaging with our content. I so appreciate your input and requests for content, Joyce. Go, Joyce. Okay, so, well, I've talked a bit about a phonetic inventory. What is it? It's the number of sounds that you produce successfully per language you speak. So when we're kids, it's very flexible. It's very easy for us to learn sounds in new languages and that would be why if you immigrated to a new country you know at the age of six you will speak the language that you are surrounded by in play with your friends and everything with the same features as the local speakers that have been around you the brain is very malleable because you're at that point where you're learning the target sounds you're learning to communicate and it's in overdrive all the neurons are firing and building brand new connections so that you can you know actualize and and be the five-year-old you need to be in the sandpit and the brain is just primed to learn sound that's that's the age for it in teen years it starts to fix so the brain starts to store connections that we're using often and calibrate them so that it's easier. We're not like, whoa, what's that sound? Let me copy it. We're like, okay, these are my sounds. I've got lots to do. I've got to do like year 12 maths and I've got to learn physics and I've got to go and do my speech pathology degree. And now I'm going to go and get my MBA. The brain just simply doesn't have capacity to be like, how do I say je me pille? exactly like the people around me it, it becomes a lower priority so the brain tunes to what it needs to give attention to according to our lifespan so we start to sort of not i wouldn't say drop the skill but the way in which we learn sounds needs to change so if there's anything you're doing to work on your pronunciation at the moment be very careful to consider are you using an adult based model now the research suggests that you need to use phonetics if you just sit and listen, that would be what would work for a child, listening and absorption. But if you're an adult, you need to look at the mechanical contrast. You need to learn the an anatomical features of the sound. You need to look at the word correlation between the symbols that you see and the sounds that you need to place on the word. So phonetic inventory will expand for adults. You can improve it. You can learn new sounds. You can stop saying shit instead of sheet if you apply a research backed method. So if you use a science based method, that's really important. Let's look at a sample phonetic inventory, but we're going to go cross language. So we're going to look at Latin American Spanish and Australian English. Now, Latin American Spanish, we could also contrast with continental Spanish because they'll look different, okay? But um, for now, let's just look at what we've got. So we've got a little bit of a Venn diagram. 
I'm sorry if that's not so romantic. I don't know how to jazz this one up. We're looking at Venn diagrams on Valentine's Eve, but this will give you some love for your speaking. So we've got an overlap. This is the main point of love for you. In the center, you will see that there are some shared sounds. Hallelujah. So English and Spanish both have a, e, i, o, no, a, e, i, u. But English doesn't have o, except in a combo, o. So if you're Spanish and you're like, you know what, these English native speakers, they don't really know how to say taco because they're going taco. <laughs> There is a reason they're not doing it to be obnoxious and, you know, completely destroy your language and sound arrogant. They're doing that taco because the English native speaker doesn't have o on its own. They didn't get given that sound when God was handing out the phonetic inventory. They have, though, that sounding combo o. OK, so they will substitute the sound that's absent with the sound that they have, that's the nearest. So that's why we hear taco, nacho, um, loco, loco, loco. I know I've heard that, yeah, instead of loco. So that's a great quick example. Now, in the center, you'll notice that some of the consonants are shared to a degree, but there's extra features on the sound that make them totally different to what you expect. So the T sound in Australian English Although we see it in that center, there's a little bit more nuance that our team will train you with. So when I say something like taco, now I really feel like nachos, seriously, or tacos. <laughs> when I say taco, that's the, the, the versus t, t, t. So if you're hearing ta taco or taco, it, it's not the same T. And that's because the phonetic inventory is different. It's a little bit like someone going to the shops and they're like, I'm gonna get some milk, right? Now I go to the shops and I always get full fat milk. I'm a dairy queen. I love dairy. I am like the least vegan person out there when it comes to dairy. So I'm going to get myself some full fat milk. And then my friend is going to go and get some almond milk. Good on her if she likes almond milk. Now it's kind of milk and we can do similar things with it, but it's not the same. And, and that's how you can see the difference with some of these sounds that look like they're shared, but they're not quite shared. They're kind of like false friends. So for me, if I have a drink of almond milk, I'm like, this, this is not milk, but it is. It's just a different type of milk. It's got a different flavor. And that's probably the easiest way to think about it. And then on that note, I think when we think about things this way, phonetics are not really that scary because we understand concepts in numerous other realms and it's a bit like, you know, when someone tries to explain to you when you're speaking in your second language and they explain something to you that everyone knows, but for some reason that communicator thought, oh, they probably don't get it because they're, you know, um, not an English, they don't speak English. So I'll just talk to them about how to do something that's really common sense. And you were like, yeah, well, well, you know, I have that in German as well. What are you talking about? It's, it's a bit like that. <laughs> Okay, so phonetics, don't let it freak you out. You'll understand because by now, as an adult, principles in life make sense. And we're looking at contrast, that's the main thing. And what are the features that create the contrast? It's just the same as almond milk versus full fat milk. For Thai, we see something totally different. We see symbols that, you know, if I were to learn Thai, I would have a lot of work to do. And my main issue would be, I have a lot of sounds to remove. Like, look at all of these vowels. And same for Spanish. Like, there are a lot of vowels to delete in English when we move to Spanish. So it's very good to give yourself some advocacy and speaking love to stop and consider, hey, like, it goes both ways. So if someone's like, you've got a very strong accent, you can be like, <laughs> you know, you've got a very Australian accent. Like, you must have lived here all your life. Like, why not? Have a conversation, make them see it the other way. It's the same way. We're all this, you know, we're all living on the earth. We all breathe the same air. So what? How lucky are we to just be alive? Okay, so that's that. I'm getting a bit excited. I'm also getting quite sweaty because I have a lot of lights on. I have this thing where I don't like gloomy light. It, I just, I love a lot of light. So um, the lights are hot. I'll show you them at one point, but um, yes, the lights are on. It's Valentine's Eve and we're moving forward. Now. 
when we assess your pronunciation or if anyone if anyone is assessing your pronunciation if there's anything you do and look maybe you can find someone else other than us if you don't like our team or you you don't sort of you're not sure um but if there's anything you do if you're looking for pronunciation training it is important it is essential that you get an assessment that's phonetic based now to get that assessment done well, you don't need to understand phonetics yet. You don't need to read it and you definitely don't need to be like, show me my phonetics. Don't worry, but you do need to see that this person is going to appraise all of the sounds you need and create phonetic, uh, create a phonetic understanding of your goals and then explain your goals in terms of the sound features in the pedal that we looked at. So you want to be getting feedback in a follow up session personalized to you this is not a group kind of thing that covers what you need to do for each of these speaking pedals if you want to get a big bunch of roses for your pronunciation you need an audit that informs you of what's to be done okay so you can be does he love me loves me loves me not loves me loves me not and then you and your pronunciation can get married and live happily ever after okay <laughs> I, i'm so excited for this this is you know, I was very interested to see if anyone would want to watch. I was like, this will be a bit, like, maybe it's boring or maybe it's too cheesy. And then I was like, we can't be too cheesy. We need to have fun. It's 2022. We need more fun in the world. So, you know, we need to romance ourselves about pronunciation. So now I'm going to ask you a question. We've talked quite a bit. We're moving towards question time. So if you do have questions, write them in the comments. I'll be going through every single question and responding at the end of this uh, skills class, but what I'd like to know is ask yourself this question, how would it feel? So how would it feel for you to never stress about how to fix your pronunciation, but instead to have a framework and a clear understanding of what each sound needs and how to implement it in a personalized way. So to personally know what sounds you could, you know, really build up on and know exactly how to do that, have a toolkit to do that. If you've never worked on pronunciation clarity, I suspect you don't have the toolkit, but it definitely doesn't mean that you can't acquire the knowledge. So what can you do to clarify your pronunciation? Number one, know the anatomical placement, which is phonetics, for the sounds of your target language. So you wanna know that B is formed with two lips, B and V is formed with teeth and lips. So that, you know, bucka and bucka actually sound different if it were in English. You want to also understand the practice loop. This is the thing that speech therapists kill it on. We rock at this. This is the difference between a speech therapist and a English teacher or someone who's not a speech therapist. So we understand how to train the sound, give you feedback on the sound, and implement therapy. It's not a therapy because you don't have anything wrong with your pronunciation in terms of a clinical thing, but we know how to give you the feedback and the exercises to practice and implement the sound. If you think of it as a physiotherapist, you go to the physio and you're like, oh, my neck, it's not good. The physio knows where to find the breakdown in your neck that needs work, how to manipulate that area to improve it using a methodology that's science-based how to give you a training program for home that I don't think everyone does that with a physio. They're just like, I'm here for the massage. Um, you know, I'm here for my self care. Um, yeah. So this is, this is essential. This is the added benefit of working with a speech therapist for your English pronunciation. So the unfortunate thing is it can feel like if I go to a speech therapist, does that mean that I've got a medical issue because I've got, you know, a different pronunciation? No, it doesn't. It just means you're working with a skilled professional who understands how to assess, evaluate, train and integrate sound to prevent communication barriers. We went to uni for that. So if you're like, I don't know whether they'll really know what to do. That can often be a common question like, do they actually, are they really experts? Do they really know how to do this? Well, if you you know, if you want to build a website, you go to a website designer and you find a website designer and you're like, yeah, he's a website designer. He knows how to do that. He went and learned how to do that. Or she went and learned how to do that. 
speech therapists, that's what we went to uni and did. And we did a lot of study in that. So we will definitely help train that practice loop. You also want to know how to work on the hierarchy of sounds. So we haven't talked about this this evening. That goes quite deep, but we'll train you in how to take the sound on its own, put it in a word, put it in a phrase, put it in a sentence as soon as you possibly can, take it to the boardroom, use it around your boss. That's a hierarchy. So it's great to be able to say, th, 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 but you also have to be able to say the, and you also have to be able to say the problem is, and you also have to be able to say the problem with this feature is that we need to reappraise our costing. And you also need to be able to say the reason why I want a pay rise is because the, so you're stepping it up to like difficult, stressful environments, still with that clarity in place. And finally, if you really want to clarify your pronunciation, it's also important to consider having a growth mindset is essential. If we work on our physique, if we work on our mental health and self care, if we work on our nutrition and our emotional intelligence, shouldn't we also work on our communication? And the best way to work out what needs to be done is to advocate for what we do well and look for the gaps. Now, the gaps may not be with your pronunciation. If you're struggling to get ahead at work, they may be with your corporate communication, your executive presence, your ability to sell yourself and advocate for yourself. And if that's the case, you need to get straight to the Sarah Geiger International website because that's taken care of through Sarah Geiger International. So make sure you head to that page if you wanna learn more about corporate communication. So we're moving to the end. Make sure you get those questions in. I'm about to start reading and addressing them. So if you want to clarify your pronunciation, is it achievable? Absolutely. It's definitely achievable if you take action now. And should you take action now? Maybe. This isn't a quick win, okay? Speaking confidence and clarity takes time to implement if it's a goal you need. The best way to know if you need it is to audit your pronunciation and work with a team that knows how to advocate for your strengths so that you don't lose confidence at the end of it. So we often will say to clients, you know what? You don't need to work on your pronunciation. Thank you so much for doing this audit. We've assessed everything. You're doing such a good job. We could tighten a few of these sounds. Why don't we do a micro program for that? Five sessions or so, build them up a bit. And then maybe you should think about how to build your job interview skills, how to build your sales skills, how to you know develop your written skills for your board exams. You know, pronunciation, you're doing well. So not for everyone, but in many cases, it is, it can be the best investment for your professional and personal success if you've appraised and evaluated the findings of a really thorough assessment into your speaking in English and realize that there are gaps that need to be plugged. And now is the best moment to make it happen fast so that you can find your better half with your pronunciation or, you know, just stop the barriers that you perceive around you. Not everyone will have barriers when it comes to their pronunciation. That's very individual. A lot of that can depend on where you're living, where you're working, who you're surrounded by. And as we mentioned earlier, it's a very personal choice if you wish to clarify or alter your English pronunciation. It's not a choice I can make for you, but weigh it up. Think of the benefits and think about whether, you know, is this really coming down to how my message is transferring due to my English speaking or are there other factors? And if you're not sure, send me a message. The, the reality is there are no shortcuts in life to anything. There's no quick fix diet. There's no, you know, I will say moisturizer that takes my wrinkles away. I'm a child of the eighties, probably so. Um, but there is a way you can fast track progress and success if you use the right resources. So we can't really take a shortcut, but we can speed things up if we just don't waste our time doing things that don't work. So our method is based on science. It gives you the support and the system to integrate practice goals. And then of course it takes two to tango. How romantic it takes two to tango, the team at Voice Science and your practice time at home is really important to getting a realistic tangible outcome. So I'll run you through very briefly by this point, some of you might be wondering, you know, what, what can we do for my pronunciation? If you're thinking about 
what options does voice science have? We have pronunciation clarification services. I've popped a couple of the core things on the screen. So we offer a pronunciation audit that's phonetics based. You can definitely do that. If you do that, you receive a personalized pronunciation blueprint that goes through all of those pronunciation petals that we covered today and gives you tangible feedback on what you're doing well. That's the first thing we tell you, what you're doing well. So if you need some advocacy, you should definitely consider doing the pronunciation audit. You can find it on our website. It's always available at any point in time and you can start within five minutes of purchase. Or once you can also consider the um, Valentine's package, which I'll show you in a quick second. Once you've done that audit, we give you a few recommendations about a variety of programs. One of the programs is the Silver Pronunciation Clarification Program. So we have programs that are sold in sets of five, 10 or 15. These are personalized sessions based on our audit findings in which your clinicians at Voice Science who are bilingual and amazing advocates for linguistic diversity will train you in a phonetics based model to approach your target sounds so that you can increase the ratio of accuracy and show you in your sessions. Basically, the sessions will show you exactly how to practice pronunciation so that when you finish your session and you know you get offline and you're at home, you know exactly what to do to push those goals forward following our directions and instruction. And then on the sidelines with that, every program comes with access to Cadenza, which is a pronunciation interface that is pretty much your chance to have the clinic on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop, at home with all the resources you need. So you don't need to waste time looking for a textbook to find words in. You don't need to go onto Google and find worksheets. We have an integrated online interface that we use in your sessions and that you log into at home that you can have open all the time to work through your sound pronunciation drills we've got consonants we've got vowels we've got videos we've got audio files we've got linking drills intonation drills there is so much detail purely on the pronunciation dashboard and there's also bonus programs if you purchase a program in terms of how to practice pronunciation. So you'll get five modules that are released each week that show you exactly how to practice your pronunciation and loads of other benefits. So that's fantastic. Um, if you are interested in the current offering, which is Cupid's pronunciation package, you will have received an email if you're on our email list as an early bird for this program. So if you're a VIP, you should have all the details. If you've got questions, hit reply, let me know. Um, and definitely check out the sales page if you've loved today and feel like you'd really like to take those goals forward using a method that's research backed with such a wonderful team as Voice Science. Okay. Um, in that program, there's lots of things you'll get. It includes a lot of features. The best way to go through that is just to head to the sales page. If you're not on the early bird list, you can join it. You'll find a link on our Facebook page. Over the last few days, we've been sharing a link for that. You can also head to our Instagram to get the details. So you can even just quickly send me a DM and I'll send the link. I'll also try and put it in the comments this evening for this video as well. The pronunciation package includes your audit. So you'll know exactly what sounds to focus on to sound better. It includes your pronunciation feedback session with one of our team members. It gives you access to your digital blueprint with a roadmap of every single sound checked off with a cross or it actually just ticks, we only use ticks, blank if you need to work on it, so that you know the key features you need to deploy to boost your clarity and confidence. It also um, includes practice materials that are plug and play, so that when you're at home you can implement your new speech behaviours. You also receive five razor sharp pronunciation clarity sessions with expert clinicians who will give you the guidance and techniques to improve your speaking. And they are based on our detailed audit. We spend about probably about an hour going through all your recordings and analyzing them and getting ready for the feedback session and the following program. So a lot of academic commitment to your growth goals for pronunciation is invested with all of our programs. And then on top of that, we're offering a really limited bonus, which is three months access to Cadenza. So if you do five of these sessions, you've also got the option to do 10 or 15 if you want to, but that's a lot. You can always start with five. It's a great start. You'll get the foundations in place and have so much that you can work on by yourself at the end of it. And then maybe come back for more if you want to, or just keep plugging away by yourself. You'll be pretty independent with a lot of your core sounds. 
So if you do purchase that, you'll also receive three months bonus access to Cadenza. So Cadenza is billed at $39 a month. We're gonna give you three months bonus so you get your five sessions, you may do them weekly or fortnightly, and then you've still got access to the interface where you can practice and you'll know exactly what to do to guide the implementation of your speaking goals. It's amazing, it's incredible, and it gets results. And then at the end of the three months, if you want, you can also subscribe to Cadenza for an easy $39 a month, cancel it any time. It's, it just is our way to keep you integrated with our clinic when you might feel like, you know, I can't, I can't keep doing programs. It does add up. It, it's obviously an investment to do a program. So we've built this interface for lots of reasons. But another reason behind that is not just to take your practice forward at home, but to allow you to stay connected to the clinic and the materials you need to practice independently. Because our core goal is advocacy and independence for your pronunciation skills so that you don't rely on us. You've got that confidence to do the work after investing in some really solid expert training sessions. So we have some payment options for this. I believe in payment options. Not everyone can pay up front. I totally understand. I was a student for about, oh gosh, like I've been at university for about 12 years. Mm. 12 years. And you know, you, we need cash flow can always be a problem. So we've got payment options that are very accessible. Two options for payment for the Cupid pronunciation package. So if you do wish to sign on board for this before midnight on Valentine's Day, so it closes tomorrow, the 14th of February at 11.59 p.m. So you've still got Valentine's Day to think it through, but I'd recommend get on it fast so you don't forget. Um, you can pay in full and that will be $1,104. That's your best value. Or you can do it in a payment plan of three payments. The payments are $368. They would start from the day you purchase. So your first payment will be $368. And then a fortnight later, you'll pay another and then your final payment. So it's spread across a six week period to make it a bit more accessible for you. Although you're doing it in installments, you have instant access to us. So you can start your audit, you can start your sessions, you can just get going, have your cadenza and all of those things. So that's the payment option. I should mention, if you don't want to do Cupid's pronunciation package right now, it doesn't mean you can't start later. You can always purchase the pronunciation audit to get started. But if you want all the added benefits, we are including this cadenza access, at, you know, a wonderful, it's just a, an add on to shower you with love on Valentine's Day for your speaking. And we also are releasing an exclusive, seldom released pronunciation practice tip guide, which is incredible. We're getting wonderful feedback on that from clients who received it in a very unique offer we offered last year. We only do Turquoise Tuesday once a year, um, but we decided to throw that in because we had such great feedback on that. So that's only available with this offer. It's really high value and it's been built by the entire team. All of us have created resources for that. So that will really power up your practice and that's limited with this edition um, and a silver program. Now it's time for questions. I thought it was time also to put my goofy gangster shot Hopefully it inspires you. I'm going to quickly check the phone and see whether we do have any questions that have come through. Um, let me just see. So if you do have questions, now is the time. And if you do want to, just for this limited moment, if you do want to check the pronunciation offer, you can definitely also find the link there. Guys, thank you so much for joining in. It's been so lovely to have people stay for the whole call. I mean, it's Sunday night, it's Valentine's Eve, and I'm not here talking to myself. That really means so much to me. I feel so honored that you would even be interested in listening to what I have to say. So thank you so very much for your attention and interest. Um, let me see, I hope you found it really beneficial. Now, I had a question but maybe it is in the, um, maybe it was in my Instagram. Let me check. I'm gonna run through a few questions that I've received and share a few that I've already responded to. Um, doo -doo -doo. 
Okay, let's see, we've got a few here. Okay, so we had a question, Sarah, can I pay via payment plan? Yes, you can, check it out, it's pretty sweet. I had another question around the currency. So some of you were asking, what is this built in? It's built in Australian dollars. Let me just go back quickly. So if you're based in America or in Europe, Australian dollars are a pretty sweet deal. This Australian dollar converts very well for many currencies. So check it out. It's a super sweet deal. It's um, it looks more expensive when it is if you think of it in US dollars. So make sure you do the conversion. Just go to xc.com um, to check that. We also had a question around, um, let me find it. Can you buy online? Yes, you can. I've had another question. Sarah, are sessions conducted online at the moment? Yes, they are. We're a virtual clinic, which is incredible because it means no matter where you live, you can work with our team. Sessions run from 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard through to 4 p.m. That's the last session. So the four o'clock runs to 4.45. So it's pretty much accessible for most people all over the world. Clients in Europe tend to prefer to do a late night session. So the 4 p.m. will be evening in Europe or an early morning session. So evening, is that right? No, sorry, 9am is an evening session, 4pm is an early morning session. So if you're living in Spain or in France or Germany, you can do your session before work or you can do your session before bed. It works quite well. And we've had a lot of clients overseas work with our team all over the world. Um, the other question I had was, is it right for me? <laughs> if you still have that question after tonight's webinar, don't worry, send me a DM on Instagram um, or on Facebook, you probably get me easy on Instagram or just hit reply to one of my emails. I had another question. How can I join the wait list? Let me pop that link into this webinar right away. So you've got that. Um, one tick, we'll put that in there now. Um, so we will add the link here. Um, sorry, I'm just making sure I've got it up. Have we got it here? I don't know. Doo -doo -doo. Can't find it. Guys, I just, you know what? This is fully multitasking, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just really wanting to give you all the things, but when I've got a few interfaces and a camera and everything, I want to make sure that you can see what you need to see right now. Okay, I found you. Here we are. Um, here's the, the sign up link. So if you head there, you can sign up and I'll send you an email. Do we have any other questions? I'll just quickly head across to our Instagram. I have a question from Mari Carmen who asked, hello, I would be interested in the pack. How can I get some more info? Thanks a lot. So Marie, I will send you a message. If you leave me your email, I will um, send an email across to you immediately so that you can get the details on this incredible offer. Otherwise, it looks like we're pretty much ready to wrap up for the evening. I'll wait and see if anyone has any other questions. Maybe not now. Any more questions? Gosh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed giving your English speaking a little bit of love. If you would like to get in touch or follow me anywhere, head to Voice Science on Instagram, on YouTube as well, and Facebook. Or you can also head to Sarah Geiger International. Let me just pop that on the screen for you. So you can head to Sarah, just search Sarah Geiger ah, International. That's the one you want to follow for any tips around corporate communication, executive presence, and all of those amazing things. You can find me on Instagram at sarahgeiger.co. There, so there's two profiles. We have voice science 
and sarahgeiger.co if you want corporate communication tips. So I hope you enjoyed tonight. Thank you so much for participating and giving me something to do on Valentine's Eve. I am now going to go and eat my creamy asparagus pasta prepared by the love of my life. Have a lovely evening and I hope to see you soon at Voice Science. Ciao for now. Bye.